Hey, what's up guys? There is less than 3 months left till the end of 2021, but the big question still remains unanswered. At what price will Bitcoin finish this year? In this video, we'll take a look at a few possible outcomes, then Plan B himself will give his own opinion on stock to flow model as well as his price target by the end of 2021. This video is brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi is a crypto platform that lets you leverage your cryptocurrencies and put it to fair use. At BlockFi, you can earn an interest rate on your crypto, buy sell crypto and borrow cash. It's like all-in-one crypto bank. You can earn up to 8.6% APY on your crypto holdings, up to 5% on Bitcoin, 4.5% on Ethereum. Now you can also earn 10% APY in crypto on any new stable coins for limited time only. You do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. Borrow money against your crypto at rates as low as 4.5% APR. BlockFi uses ACH that allows users to deposit slash withdraw funds with no fees. Do you want first Bitcoin rewards credit card? Join the waiting list and receive unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every purchase. Sign up today and earn up to $250 bonus when you open an account with the link blockfi.com slash in the description box below. Let's start with the cryptocurrency market. Today we have a mixed performance, but overall crypto assets pull back a bit. Market cap is just under $2.3 trillion. Bitcoin's dominance is under 46% and Ethereum dominance drops slightly under 18%. Today, BTC price slightly under $55,000. Few days ago it was about $57,000, so it pulled back a bit. But let's also not forget that few weeks ago Bitcoin was at $40,000, so overall BTC is still trending upwards. On the day, it's actually down by 4%, and in the week it's still up by 6%. Second best weekly performing asset. Market cap still remains about 1 trillion bucks. Ethereum has been consolidating sideways more or less for quite some time. Today it's just over $3,400. Developers continue to make progress with Ethereum 2.0. The team accomplished the transition of multi-client from proof of work to proof of stake. On the day, ETH is down by 2.3% and on the week is down by 2.2%. Look what we have here. Binance Coins claims back its third spot. It flipped Cardano and Tether coin. In fact, Cardano with its lacking performance got pushed back to the fifth spot. Binance coin is up by 6% of the day and more than 2% of the week. XRP seems like it had a decent pump, but it deflated once again, which is not surprising me at all. XRP and Dogecoin have a lot in common. Polkadot is actually doing well. Today is about $34. It's up by 10% of the week. It's actually the best weekly performing asset, even better than Bitcoin, just slightly. Dogecoin is down and it's nowhere near its all-time high. It's still down by 70% from its all-time high. I told you it's a pump and dump scheme. Here we have year to day performance of top stocks versus Bitcoin. Tesla is down. Gold is down by 6% on the year. Apparently, it's supposed to perform very well in a high inflationary environment and it's not really delivering those performances at least as of yet. Facebook and Microsoft are still slightly up. Google and Nvidia are up by more than 50%. And of course, we have Bitcoin that beats them all. It's up by almost 80% year to date. Here we have interesting on-chain analytics chart. There is some small spike in BTC number of addresses holding 10 plus BTC. If you have at least 10 Bitcoin, you are official in Octopus and you hold of around $550,000 of purchasing power. You are a semi-millionaire. Now there are more than 147,600 Bitcoin addresses that hold at least 10 BTC. Here we have slightly different assets performance year over year. Within one year time frame, gold is slightly up. It's up by only 3%. S&P 500, which is 500 largest companies in the United States, it's up by almost 50%. It's beating gold by quite a bit. Then of course, we have Bitcoin. BTC, it's up by more than 550% year over year, outperforming by a huge margin S&P 500 and especially gold. A year ago, Bitcoin was slightly over $10,000 and now it's at 55,000 bucks. Not bad if you ask me. Here's an update on this current Bitcoin bull market and how it's been compared to 2012 and 2013 bull market. The historic bull market patterns indeed look very similar to each other. In 2012 bull market we had a nice run up, then 70% correction followed by another leg up. 
In this current bull market we also had initially nice run up, then followed by 55% correction and now it seems like Bitcoin is ready to take new highs. Only time will tell if BTC will follow similar patterns as it did so far. If it will, we might see BTC above $250,000 a coin. 250k that's a 4.5x from this current price. That would be nice. Now let's take a look at the Bitcoin stock to flow model and what is it telling us this time. The blue boundaries is an inner confident interval. Those light blue color is an outer confident interval. Historically, most of the time BTC spent inside this blue color. Just recently, when BTC had this 55% dip, it went outside of the inner confident interval, and it has been trading there for quite some time. Now, the first time since July or so, BTC spiked back inside the inner confident interval. Does that mean that Bitcoin is back on track? Very likely. Historically, that was at least two times when BTC dropped below the inner confident interval. Once, it was in 2015 bear market where BTC recovered quite quickly and it went into the massive bull market run. Then, the second time took place in 2018 bear market. It was the bottom where BTC dropped till $3,200. I believe BTC spent a few months before recovering. On contrast, there was also a number of times where BTC went outside of the confident interval but it spiked upwards. First time it was in 2011 Bitcoin spike, then twice in 2013 and 2014 bull market and the fourth time was in late 2017 bull market. Nobody was complaining back then because Bitcoin price was up. But when BTC is down, many traders may come to the conclusion that the stock to flow model isn't valid. Now let's take a look what Plan B himself has to say about Bitcoin stock to flow model and where does he expect BTC price to be by the end of 2021. Let's take a look. First, I want to start with a uh, stock to flow model. Uh, you're the creator of this, and most people point to it as uh, kind of the single guiding light to them in terms of uh, the relationship of Bitcoin's price to these halving cycles. So talk us through a little bit about what the stock to flow model is and then what it's showing us so far. Yeah, so the stock to flow ratio is a, a ratio from the commodities market actually that that uh, tells you something about an asset's scarcity. Um, it divides the uh, stock, the, the reserves of a certain asset uh, by the flow, the, the newly issued um, bitcoins or, or gold, newly mined gold. And if you divide the stock by the flow, you get the stock to flow ratio. So that ratio was known for ages in the commodities market. What I did was connect that with the market value of, uh, well, Bitcoin in the beginning, but later also the other assets uh, like silver and diamonds and gold and real estate. And what you find that there is a perfect linear relationship in the uh, logarithmic space. So that was quite shocking. And, and with that, you can, uh, you can actually predict the price of Bitcoin very roughly, I should say, but you can do it. And uh, because we know the stock to flow ratio of of, uh, of Bitcoin, it's it's pre-programmed, and that's yeah, that's a very nice thing. And it, it's of course very bullish uh, at, at the moment. It predicts um, somewhere around a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin for the current halving cycle, which is uh, 2020 2024. So uh, we're actually heading towards that. Yeah, it's uh, it's that. So when you think of the stock to flow ratio, one of the things that I'm fascinated by is it comes from the commodities market, but it's actually potentially more accurate when it comes to Bitcoin because we know with certainty and can prove the supply um, of both the outstanding supply and the daily incoming supply. Describe a little bit about why that certainty and that, that verifiability is so important to the accuracy of a model like this. Yeah, so for example, with gold, we don't know how much gold is mined every year. It's, it's, uh, we, we can make a forecast, uh, but we don't know it um, precisely. And a lot of factors impact that, that uh, supply, that, that mine supply of, of uh, gold. And, and one of the factors impacting that is, is, is price, right? If the price of gold is high, then the miners will, will uh, increase their production. And if the price of gold is low, they will uh, decrease the, the production and the mining of gold. With Bitcoin, um, every, yeah, well, the whole production, the whole flow is pre-programmed. Every 10 minutes on average, right? Every 10 minutes, there's a block. And in that block is a, a block subsidy um, with the new Bitcoins for the miner that uh, found the hash of that block. So. Uh, we know sort of that every 10 minutes and, and, and for the whole year, 
uh, how, how much Bitcoins there will be mined. Uh, of course, we don't know it exactly because there is some um, variability in the in the 10 minute interval. Sometimes it, it, it lasts an hour. Sometimes you have uh, like three blocks in, in 10 minutes. But on average, we know, and, and especially long term, we know what the stock to flow uh, ratio will be and thus what the price uh, will be roughly. So when you think about these halving cycles, obviously there's a supply shock, um, but how do you think about uh, kind of the cyclical nature of this, right? Is there a point where you expect the model or ratio to be invalidated, uh, either through external forces um, or people start to uh, kind of price it in and, and front run it? Like, how do you think about uh, the fact that we do know the supply and that helps for the accuracy of uh, stock to flow, but at some point, does that become a, a negative? Yeah, there's several aspects to that. Um, of course, from efficient market hypothesis, you would expect that this knowledge uh, and the model would be priced in. So I actually, and, and most people with me, expected the halving, uh, the May 2020 halving, would be priced in already. So we did, we would not see the actual price rise that we're seeing now. That is uh, very much in line with the stock to flow model because. All the information is out there, the stock information, the flow, the stock to flow ratio and the model. So uh, it, it shouldn't follow the model as closely as it does today. Uh, on the other hand, there's there's a lot of people not believing the model and the model, of course, hasn't proven itself. So uh, may, maybe that that sort of um, puts the efficient market hypothesis argument aside. But on the other hand, um, I, I think that the stock to flow model uh, will break uh, in the future because um, one of the nice things about the stock to flow uh, model and especially the stock to flow cross asset model the stock to flow x model which also incorp incorporates uh, data from the gold market diamond market real estate market and silver market so other uh, stores of value if you will if we um, look at, at that stock to flow x model we can interpolate the data uh, because gold has a higher stock-to-flow ratio than Bitcoin, and real estate has a higher higher uh, stock-to-flow ratio. Gold is 60, around 60, and real estate is around 100, uh, where Bitcoin is 50, 55 right now. Um, so we know we, we can, within the data set we have available with, with gold and, 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 and real estate in there, with market values of, of uh, 10 trillion for the gold market and 100 trillion for the real estate market. We can, we can interpolate within the data set. And, uh, and of course, that ends. Because if Bitcoin um, will have its next halving in 2024, the Bitcoin stock to flow ratio will jump to 100, which is very yeah, which is approximately the same as um, real estate. Um, but after next halving, when we jump to 200 stock to flow ratio for, for Bitcoin, we're out of the model data uh, bounds, if you will. And then we have to extrapolate, which, which is what basically all the other models are doing. They, they're extrapolating into the future, um, which is very dangerous. And, and one of the big assets, big advantages of the stock to flow model, the stock to flow X model in particular, is that the, the, this interpolation can be done. So to be sh in short, I think the stock to flow model uh, will and uh, to be valid somewhere after next halving when the stock to flow is above 100 because we cannot uh, interpolate anymore. And of course, that, that, that means probably that the dollar, uh, the denominator in that model, w w will end to play a big role or, 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 or something. I, I, of course, it doesn't say that Bitcoin will die or something. It's, it's, or, or, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a model it will not be very accurate after that. What do you think is uh, the likely price for Bitcoin by the end of the year? And do you think that the bull market ends at the end of the year or does it carry us into the beginning of 2022? Yeah, that's the most uh, asked question. <laughs> uh, I, I would be very, very surprised if Bitcoin price would be below $100,000 at the end of the year. That would, well, sort of invalidate my view, my models and... Uh, that would that would certainly surprise me. I, I do think uh, we will see a price that is uh, at least one hundred thirty-five thousand 
uh, dollars by Christmas because uh, that's what my floor model says. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm using three kind of models that, that all say the same thing. So stock to flow, which has 100,000 on average for the entire cycle. And we're, mind you, we're one and a half years into that cycle and with below 100,000 prices. So we'll have to, to spend the next two and a half years um, markedly above 100,000 to make that, that average. And the second model I use is the on-chain uh, stuff. Um, that that on-chain stuff is really good at, at, the, at identifying bottoms and peaks. So uh, we're now talking uh, peaks, of course. So I know quite... Uh, um, well, certain, not not guaranteed, but but I, I will have high high confidence in that the on-chain indicators will signal a top. And if you if we look at the on-chain signals right now, I would say that top is at least a couple of months, say six months uh, from here. So so that would be end of Q1, maybe maybe later. Plan B said that he would be very surprised if BTC price would be below $100,000 by the end of this year. He also thinks that BTC is likely to hit $135,000 by Christmas. That would be a very nice Christmas present. But then it may dip to 100 k Also he thinks that the Bitcoin bull market will continue into Q1 of 2022. Now there is less than 3 months left till the end of 2021. I hope BTC will hit at least 6 figures price. But in the end of the day, Bitcoin does not care what anyone thinks. It does not have any opinions. It will do whatever it wants. Let me know what you guys think. Will the Bitcoin price hit plans B price target? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit that like button and subscribe for more videos.